see is that the egg is in protective well, and I wanted to come up with a, lot, a better way than using dog barf to protect the egg. Um, I've always used dog barf uh, in my egg capsules, and it seems to work sometimes better than others. Um, and I think part of the problem is that the dog barf isn't uniform in consistency, and you get these little dense parts in it. And when those contact the egg, when the egg hits the ground, they can crack the egg. So I wanted something that was more uniform, and then something that was also that conformed to the egg, is what you see here. Uh, this is an egg capsule that I made. This is one of the first ones. Uh, the egg would go inside, you put them together, and then just slide them in your tube. And it was, it was pretty much done. And I could take this, and I could just drop it on the floor, and the egg would survive. Uh, the only time that I was able to break the egg was when I took it and I threw it against the wall. And I wouldn't break it. So what I'm going to do is go through the process of, basically of what my R&D was for this product. And it always started with the egg. And you, as you know, an egg doesn't have a defined shape like a sphere. So how do you get to an egg shape? Well, and you only need one half of the egg. So I took an actual egg and I cut a hole in a piece of plastic and I, I put the egg through it so I could get the surface area because you need the surface area. Go ahead next. Um, and what I needed was a mold of the part. And unfortunately, I didn't bring this part, but this is a different one. Um, so you take the egg and then you put something behind it. What you want is a solid part that looks like this where you put the egg in. Um, because you need to make a mold of this. You need something hard that's not going to deform while you're going through the molding process. Yes. So on this particular one, um, I just took a body tube, took my egg, and to make it solid, I just poured casting resin in it, and it filled up the whole side, and some oozed out around the egg, but I didn't care about that, because I was going to clean it up later next. Um, and here you see I was peeling it apart, so you can see the casting resin, and then I cracked the egg, you crack the egg to get it out. Next one, next one, next one. Okay. So this, and this basically look, is what it looks like when you get the egg out. Now, when I first started, my first ones, I used a real egg. And that was really hard to get the shell out. And then I found these uh, ceramic <coughs> eggs down at Michael's. And they're identical to, to the size of an egg, and they're more uniform. And that's even better yet. So I use those, and those pop out real easy. So next. So then what you do next after that is you have to clean it up. You have to make it um, as smooth as possible because you're going to be making the mold. And any imperfections you see in the actual prototype are going to show up in the mold. So you can see here I painted it and sanded it. Um, and then you got to mount it um, to be able to make a mold. And this is the first step. On a, on a simple mold like this, I just took a piece of plastic, glued it to a piece of plastic, and built a box around it. On a complex mold like, like this one here, um, I had to think ahead. I had to be smarter than the foam because the foam wants to grow up and not, not sideways. So I, I mounted it at a little angle to allow the foam to grow upwards. And to mount it on the angle, I, I built a little pedestal out of plastic and then modeling clay. And it's a special modeling clay called clean clay um, that doesn't react with the, uh, the rubber. Next. So you can here you can see the box that I built around it. Next. And then I poured the RTV rubber in it. If you've ever used RTV rubber, it's like really, really thick syrup. Um, you mix, it's a two-part mix. It's a ratio of about 10 to 1. You mix it up. And when you get this nice blue consistency, then it's ready to pour in. You pour it in, and then you wait overnight for it to cure. Next. And here's my, I pulled off the sides. It's what the look it looks like. Next. Um, you can see this is the part inside. The clay kind of sticks to it, but it's easy to clean out. Um, just taking a paper towel, wiping it down, we'll take it out. Um, this is, then it was all clean. And so this is um, what I want, wanted to do at this point was to make a hard mold of that part. So I, I built another box around it. Well, actually, actually, this is a two-part mold. I got one side, I have a mold on this side, and then I have another mold on the other side. So what I did was flipped it over, and this little stem in here was a vent hole. I wanted a vent hole so a lot of air to get out. Next. Uh, so here the, the rubber was dry, and I was peeling it apart. Next. Uh, and then I, when I get it done, I get something that looks like that. Next. And you can see the little vent hole where the air can get out. At 
this point, I was ready to pour in the, the, the resin, which is this right here. I, I found a company called BJB Enterprises, and they're in California, and they service the movie industry because they use a lot of soft foam. Okay. Uh, and this is the first pour that I poured into the mold. You can see it oozed out. Now, when you, when you pour in the foam, it's like the rigid foam that you probably used before. It, it grows, expands about 25 times its original volume. And it oozed out. Uh, and you see, most of it came out the side, and not, not, not much came out my vent hole when I, I wanted it to come out the vent hole. Uh, so I knew I had a problem. My vent hole was too small. Uh, so I peeled it out to get rid of this, and then you can cut, cut the edges with the scissors, just like that. And, and, it, and that's, that's the final part. And you can stick an egg in it, and you can actually go out and fly it. Make two of them, you know, to, to stick the bite. Um, the problem with, with the, the rubber molds is that sometimes the rubber will stick, or the foam will stick in them. So you need a really, make a really good part, you need a hard mold. And a hard mold is, uh, it's hard. That's why I call them hard molds. And to make this, you have to reverse the original mold. You have to make a, an actual rubber copy that's the reverse of it. So, next, and this is, so basically, you take your original mold and you build a box around it. And here is, at this point I've already built the uh, reverse mold, but this is a reverse mold. You can see it doesn't look, it looks like what I had originally. But they don't go together. You couldn't, you couldn't make anything in here. So from this point, now I can make the hard mold, and that's what this box is. And this is casting resin that I mixed up, and I was going to pour it in the box. And I poured it in, and then my box exploded. You can see all this. <laughs> and you can't do anything about it. You just have to let it harden and then just refill it again. Um, and so then you get this. This was my first hard mold. And see, I made my vent mold bigger. Um, and that, that's this one right here. So that's next. Um, so here's where I let it harden. <laughs> so then when you peel it apart, because it's such a mess, I had all this excess resin on there, but that's okay because I only needed, I only needed this, the top half. Next. Next. Okay. So, so that's what this looks like. And before I came here, I poured a mold. And you can see there's a little bit of uh, uh, foam that just came through. So I knew it was just the right amount. Um, and then to get them apart, you just take a, a screwdriver and you just pop them apart. And they come apart real easy. See down here, there's a the little, little screw for the vent hole, and then they can pop off really easily. Yes, thank you. Um, the one thing about it is you do have to use a mold release in these, um, and uh, BJB sells a mold, a mold release to go with their, their foam. I found uh, um, in the internet they use Crown Mold Release to spray their aluminum mandrels. That works too. I've, I've used that. It's a little bit nicer because it's, it's quicker. You just will with the spray. And after a while, um, it builds up a little later, uh, which you can clean out with just a heat gun. You take a heat gun, you melt the wax, and you take a air towel and you clean it out. The nice thing about that, when you do that, you get a part. The next part you pull out of your mold is really shiny compared to one that's uh, a little bit older. Uh, this mold here, when you, when you pour a mold, I got a little bit smarter and I put hinges on them. Um, and this one I pour the resin in and you get this little mushroom on top where the excess comes out and you just pop that right off. By the way, my kids love pulling them off. <laughs> and then, you know, I just unclasp it. Try it apart. And to get these out, um, what you do is you just press down on them. This one, I, you can see, I just pulled out a little bit of the skin, but that's pretty much okay. Um, I, I got smarter. My mold boxes is the hard part. You know, you got four sides. I said, well, why not use a, uh, a tube? So I used a tube on this one. But then you get the problem where you put the clasps. And so what I had to do is I had to sand it down so I could have a nice flat surface area. And then I had two, and I said, okay, well, how do I orient this thing? So I painted one side green, one side red. So when I put them together, I knew exactly where to go. Because when you, you have to work quick, about as quick as I'm talking, when you're, when you're pouring these things, because the foam, as soon as you mix it, it starts reacting. So you have to pour it 
well, it's still a liquid before it turns into foam. Because once it's a foam, you can't pour foam. Because when you pour foam, you get voids in your mix. So they use pop them open. And you know, just pop it up. Take the top off. These are a little bit harder to get out. You kind of push down and then you pull on the ears. Kind of <coughs> Because it's a urethane, you can glue to it using Gorilla Glue. Um, and I, I made these nose cones with a, with a hole on the bottom where you can put a body tube and you can put your altimeter in there and just cap it off. And now you got protection for your, your altimeter as well as the egg. And you can tug on that and it'll never pull it out. You'll, you'll, you'll bust open the foam before you get that. So here you can see the altimeter in it. Uh, this is the mold release that, that I've used. The Challenge 90 is the stuff that comes from DJB Enterprises and they have a crop mold release. So, see what I just showed you. Uh, this is what a void looks like. Uh, and this is, it's basically as you're trying to pour the foam and the foam doesn't want to get into the corners. Uh, because the egg, if you look inside here, you have one side that's thinner than the other side because the egg is long. Uh, those corners, resin doesn't want to go in there. So when I pour it in there, I try to get into those corners as fast as possible so that it can fold <coughs> outwards from that point. Uh, but if you're if you're too late, and I you can see I got a I can I can pour six at one time. The sixth one is always the hardest one because it's really reacting on me. So you have to pour fast and sometimes you get these voids and at, at that point they're they're used I can't sell them so I usually give them away to the local kids. They're still good but they, they look bad. And they, they make really good snowballs on it. I see you guys are throwing them around. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other reason to use a hard, hard hold is um, they're, they're, the foam comes in different densities. Go ahead, Max. The foam comes in different densities, and you can. This is a, it's a closed cell foam, which basically means as the foam's inside, it's making little bubbles, and each little bubble creates its own sphere. And then these spheres. Uh, contact each other and it creates a wall inside and they're, they're much stiffer. So the, this is a, a open cell foam or closed cell foam. It's a four pound density where the, the original stuff that I was using is a three pound density open cell. Okay. Um, part of the problem that I've discovered that is that the, uh, the, four, the four pound stuff doesn't like to work with, with just silicone rubber like this. Um, so it basically it peels off the skin and because of that you <coughs> definitely have to use a hard mold when you're using this stuff here. Um, I also found you can use body tubes and just pour into a body tube and you can make cylinders. And my very first test was, was done in a body tube and it worked out really well. And this one I, I use between my egg capsules. Uh, we did dual egg blocking the other day, so I, I, I took two capsules like this, stuck them together, and stuck this in the middle. And the nice thing is this opened up my uh, the, the outer shell, so I had a nice thing to tape against. Um, and, it, and it's really dense. Um, the nice thing about them is, is they do protect the egg really well. Um, Allison Swipe hers landed on the tent and then rolled on the table. And then she's walking back to me and her eyes get all puffy. She's dead. It's just cracked my egg. So we'll go, you know, go to the table and open it up anyway. She opened it up and it was fine. Uh, mine, of course, did a ballistic impact and the egg splattered way up. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't, doesn't uh, protect against ballistic recovery. Uh, but these are the actual uh, egg capsules that so you just wash them off and they are usable. So this part was part that I wanted to sell. So, questions? Well, one, kudos for your persistence. That was a, that was a lot of a lot of iterations to get something you could sell. Um, as you thought about, I mean, I'm thinking, my first question popped up, when you came to the issue of voids, is, is pressure molding, is, is, is molding under pressure something that works with this stuff, and is it just a pain in the neck, or is that maybe the it, neck? It should work. It should it work. Should. But you got 20 seconds. I think you got to, you know, the manufacturer says, you know, stir vigorously for 20 seconds. Well, you, from trial, trial and error, it's less than that. You got to, you got to, I wonder if a, I wonder if a colder room would. Um, actually, no, yeah, if you refrigerated it, that should uh, cool it down. 
down, so it's starting to slow down the reaction. Um, I might try that in the wintertime where I can put them outside. I don't have a refrigerator big enough in, in my shop to do that, but I'll, I can stick them out, outside where they would get nice and cold. If you, uh, when you look with RTV, DDS the RTV. So you DDS the RTV. Do I DDS the RTV? Yes. I degas it and then I do the pressure. And this is the one I learned from Matt Steele last year. Uh, he, uh, basically, what that does, uh, I degas to get the bubbles out, and then I pressure it to, to make it more dense. Um, it works really well for the resin. For the foam, it's, it's not such of a big deal because the foam doesn't create a lot of pressure in the mold. So, you know, I've, I've probably pulled off maybe 100 molds out of this so far. And it's like brand new. You can tell when they get old is that they start turning green. If anybody's done <coughs> TV stuff before, they, they turn green and they, they feel waxy where this feels nice and smooth like, I don't know what. DGAS it as you mix it or, or in the bowl? Um, I degas it right after I mix it. I degas it. And then from there, I put it right into the pressure pot. So I pour it into whatever I'm holding and then put it in the pressure pot. And then just let it to sit overnight while it's curing under pressure. Um, in your report early on, you said the secret to the success is picking the right phone. Yes. So what all did you go through to pick the right phone, and how did you know it was right when you were done? Um, well, first is finding a phone. Um, I, I was looking for, you know, you, you see these commercials on TV for the uh, memory foam. That's what I was looking for originally. So I was doing my internet searches on memory foam and I was finding companies that made it. But you had to order in huge quantities. So just finding somebody that would sell me a small quantity was good. Um, and then when I got it, you know, this, I think of this one was the first one. So I mixed up a small batch. They allow you to order a small batch. So I mixed it up and I said, oh, this is good. This is, it, it just, it has a really nice feel to it. You know, and you see how spongy it is and it pops right back. Uh, one of these, I can't even tell which one, but one of them, now this one kind of, um, it's my box, I don't know if you know these things are made. And, and during the trip here, they, uh, they got squished flat. And so it's been flat for, since uh, a week ago, Tuesday when we left Colorado, and it, it's springing back. And so eventually it will spring back at home. So that's kind of what I, I look for in my criteria of what's, what's a good material to look for. Back before my technology begins, they call it foam rubber. And this feels a lot like foam rubber, but just a skosh firm. Yeah. So, so you were, how did you determine your firm, the right firmness to protect the egg? Uh, I, was, I was looking in the catalog at the lowest density foam they had, because I didn't want anything that was heavy. And the, the lowest they had was three pounds per cubic foot. I said, okay, I'll try that. Um, and then later, I made a nose cone out of this stuff. And, uh, you know, made, made, made that out of this. And, and, and it was nice, and it was usable, but I said, well, you know, you think this is going to be a rocket going in the air. You want your nose cone deforming. So I wanted something firmer. So then I tried this stuff. You know, and it, it still has enough... Uh, rigidity to be a good nose cone, but soft enough, if, if it hit the ground, it would protect the egg and whatever payload you might have in there. So you have a harder, a, a firmer nose cone and a, and a gentler, a lighter one around the egg. egg. They're on the egg. Got it. Yeah. It's just trial and error. Give a little bit of trial and error. Okay. okay. Are there any questions from the audience? Uh, why should I choose something like your product if I can make something out of this many polypropylene EPP foam that, in my experience with TARC, for four years has survived, I believe, four drops in 750 I, I'm not familiar with that. <laughs> um, it sounds cool, though. Um, you know, if it works for you, go for it. You know. This is something that I 